This is my beautiful 95 E36. And I say beautiful because it is finally driving now. But there are some things to take care of before I can get it inspected. Some brake lights weren't working. So I had to replace some bulbs and then I could take it to get inspected. This car is pretty nice. I'm cruising, got cruise control on. Yeah, I know what the check engine lights are. Uh, I think it's a coolant sensor. I have it, but uh, everything looks good except for the steering wheel. And the stuff in the back rattling is just some interior trim pieces that I haven't put on. But yeah, she's rolling. So I fixed the lights, got it inspected, drove it to work, and then I got notified another brake light was out. So I fixed it in the parking lot of an AutoZone. So after work, I pulled off and set up my phone on a window ledge so that I could turn the headlights on and off and press the brake a few times to see which bulb actually needed to be replaced. And it was obvious. So I replaced it and voila, everything's good now. I made sure and went back and tested it with the headlights on and off. So I finally got this bad boy running and it is a blast to drive. It's going to be sad to let it go, but I got to move on. There are a couple of other low priority things that I may or may not address. Like the temperature controls do not illuminate when you turn the headlights on at night. That will be nice to have, but again, low priority. And the trunk light doesn't work. I'm pretty sure it's just the bulb, but it's not high enough priority for me to worry about too much. Just something to note. I also had a friend give me an estimate for repainting the trunk, but as it turns out, it wasn't worth it. And then I had a false alarm. I gotta see what's going on with this. It says I have a tail light failure, washer fluid low. That's easy enough. But when I go look at the tail light, it's fine. And the brake lights are working just fine too. So I moved on to the fluids. Finally doing a little bit of maintenance on the E36. It's been running great. I've put like 300 miles on it. So I'm draining out the distilled water and doing an oil change. So whoever buys it will have fresh coolant and fresh oil. This is the first car I've ever owned where you can do the oil filter from the top. Less mess. This is one of the easiest oil changes I've ever done. Okay, this is really cool. The oil change kit comes with a new O-ring for the oil filter cap, and it comes with a gasket for the top of that and one for the drain plug. I didn't know that, but I am pleasantly surprised. Fresh gasket there, fresh O-ring there. Let's put it in. And oh yeah, a fresh O-ring on this bad boy. Ta-da! I'm still geeked with this. The filter comes with a new drain plug gasket. To me, that's a big deal. Usually you have to source this elsewhere. What will you think of next, Germany? I don't know how anal you guys are about your oil changes, but I'm going to let it drain for another hour or so, even though it's at a drip. Sometimes I'll let it go overnight, but not tonight. I want to finish this today. So I'm going to drain the engine block on my 95 325i and of course I drain the radiator but that right there is where you drain the block. So I'm going to get to that. It looks to be a, I don't know, a 15 or a 17. Yeah, so actually a 13 millimeter socket will get that off. It was actually easier to get a wrench on it than it was to get a socket on it. Fresh oil, bled the coolant, check for leaks. Thankfully, no leaks. So now I'm gonna close the hood. And I think I'm gonna go to bed. Probably pull the WRX in. Yeah. Not a bad night. Now that the E36 is running well, I have a few parts that I need to install just to kind of button things up a bit. The clip on this is broken, so I got a new one. Got the new 
fitting on and it should just clip right in. Oh. Alright, let's see. Oh, the o ring is tight. So I got it in and I'm glad I replaced it because the new o ring was a much tighter fit. So I had to put a little bit of oil on the o ring so I can slide it in. And I used this area right here to push it in. But yeah, it's nice and snug now. And you see that thing back there? It doesn't stay on, so I got a new one of those too. And the only code this car was throwing was an intake air temperature code, so I got a new sensor for that. So the air intake temperature sensor is right here. You see it? You see it right there? So I'm gonna press in on that little metal arm and take it out. When I get my hand in there, you're not gonna be able to see it. And the old shift knob, the little button didn't work. So I got this one, which is not the type that normally comes on a 95. When I swapped out the, the shifter, I swapped out to the newer style shifter. So the old shift knob wouldn't fit. But this one is for the newer style shifter. And it should, come on, should go right in. Let's see, Let's see if I can make it fit right. Oh, I think that was it. And that looks way better. Let's see if it behaves the way it should. And it does. Perfect. I was doing some work on the radiator and I noticed this on the headlight. Headlight works just fine, but it's cracked there. So I ordered a new one and I'm gonna install it right now. So check this out. I'm looking at it and I was trying to figure out how to disconnect it and take it out. It's just been sitting in there the whole time. Like, it's literally connected to nothing. So I'm just going to disconnect the, uh, the connections and install the new one. That's crazy. I think it's supposed to connect down there and down there, but yeah. So how do these come off? So there's that one, that one, and then just squeeze a tab on this one. This one was just sitting in there. All right. So in comparing the two, this part here is broken on the old one and they have it connected with a zip tie and the bottom, bottom is intact, but it's loose. But yeah, so I'm gonna cut that. And yeah, this has seen some trauma too, like something burned right here. And it looks like this goes together pretty easily. So these slots go into those slots and it looks like this is the latch that'll hold it together. And I think I can install it all at once on the car. So this should be a satisfying snap. Let's see, well, maybe, maybe not. So I'm having trouble sliding it in because whatever happened here is keeping me from getting it in. So I'm gonna go get a knife or a blade and see if I can trim that back. I do wonder what happened. These flush cut clippers may be the way to go. Maybe they had some sort of LEDs that caught on fire or something in here. Who knows? All right, let's see if that's good enough to uh, slot it on. That might do it. Yeah, boy. All right, well, that did it. I really think all we gotta do is uh, bolt these top three in and we're good. There are some connections down here that we need to address. Let's go back over to the car. So it looks like the type of insert that is here to receive the, the screws is also here and here. So I'm gonna take these off and see if I have some that match it. If not, I might make a trip to the store and see if they have something. See, is this a good fit? 
does look like a good fit. The bottom latch like this is broken, but I think we're good to go. So I'm just gonna connect everything, test them out and then go screw searching. That's already better mounted than it was before. And yeah, I'll be able to access the screws in there either through here or by taking off this panel. Yeah, I'm gonna go see if I got something. And I'm gonna take off the protective cover. And there will be some adjustment that I have to make. So I'm gonna leave that loose. That was easy enough. Of course, they didn't have this exact fastener but I can approximate it with this. This is sold as a license plate screw, but it is very similar and I just found a washer that was close. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the top for now. I'll deal with the, the ones in the bottom later because I have to go show this car to somebody who wants to buy it. Well, they're thinking about buying it. That looks great. Sadly, the other side looks dingy. Anyway, I'm gonna go gather up the wife and we're gonna go show this car. First, we're gonna make sure it works. I think we're good. So after I was convinced that it was mechanically sorted and drove it several hundred miles, ran through a few tanks of gas, I decided to take some pictures and list it. I listed it on Facebook and Craigslist. I got quite a bit of interest and the second person that looked at it decided to buy it. So how much did I sell it for and how much did I make? I listed it for $3,700 and the guy who decided to buy it thought it was a good deal and didn't even try and talk me down. Here's the breakdown on how much I spent and how much profit I made. So I'm going to consider everything a cost except gas. So here we go. I had $800 into the car itself, $10 for the notary to sign the title over to me. Of course, the radiator was $208 and change. Then I got hoses and nuts to put the radiator and various other things on. I spent $65 on coolant, $224 on the battery, but I got 22 of it back for the core charge. I spent $42 and change on a PCV kit. And in order to drive it legally back and forth to work, I did fully register it and that was $100. The shift assembly was about $43. The shifter was $34 and change and a big cost, the solenoids and seals were $553. Damn. And the valve body to get the other solenoids was $124. And then I had the intake temperature sensor, which I did install, I don't know if I documented it, it was only 14 bucks. Um, the license plate at DMV was 93.64. The shifter, not the shift assembly, but just the shifter to match the new shift assembly was $54. Idle air control valve was $21. And the new headlight was $69.38 for a grand total of $2,473.07 that I spent on the car. Since I sold it for $3,700, I cleared just over $1,200. And for this being a hobby that I really like doing anyway, it's pretty cool when it can pay you back sometimes. But when I think about it, it was actually closer to 1100 because the tow from the dealership to my storage unit was $100. But all in all, it was still a blast. So much so that I'm going to try and do it again. But this time, it will be with the 07 X5. And it needs a lot of work. If you'd like to follow along, hit subscribe. If you would like to see the things I've already done with the other cars I own, check out my channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.